We start with a huge night in the Champions League quarterfinals with uh, Manchester City and Arsenal both hoping to progress to the last four. We've got every angle covered for you. Ben Ransom is at the Etihad Stadium where City will defend their title against the 14-time winners of this competition. But first, Paul Gilmore is in Germany where Arsenal face Bayern Munich. Paul, good afternoon to you. Arsenal looking to reach the semis of this tournament for only the third time. Could the result tonight and the outcome of this tie have a, a significant bearing on the rest of their season? Well, good afternoon, David. Uh, yes, of course, uh, Mikel Arteta has urged this Arsenal team to rewrite the story, uh, their own story. And it's something that uh, they've had a couple of setbacks of late. But other than that, 2024 has been a pretty good year for Arteta's side. They have been mean in terms of defence. They have been free scoring. Uh, but in the last couple of games, they did uh, find it tough, tough against Bayern Munich, falling behind 2-1 in the first leg uh, before uh, rescuing a draw and that's what the, the score is going into this one tonight it was followed by a 2-0 defeat against Aston Villa in the league to fall two points behind Manchester City at the top of the Premier League table a team they just don't want to fall behind in the league at this point of the season so uh, unlike Bayern Arsenal have multiple competitions they are going in from big league game to big Champions League game followed by another league game as they will have this weekend against Wolves uh, and so certainly they have a, an extra chance to define their season compared to Bayern uh, as they go for both of these competitions. Now Ben, Carl Walker has been back in training, could you see him thrown straight into the side despite missing the last five games? Well, a temptation must be there for Pep Guardiola because Kyle Walker is so important to the way they play. But in particular, in these big games, those one-on-one -on -one matchups, we've seen it in recent seasons in the biggest competitions, the showdowns with Real Madrid. Think back to last year when he had to face Vinicius Jr. Think back to when he had to face Kylian Mbappe for PSG. He's done it for City. He's done it for England. That he's so good at that one-on-one -on -one defending, that recovery pace, which gets City out of trouble so often. But, of course, the fact he's not played for five matches, the fact that he was only back in the squad at the weekend but didn't make uh, the pitch suggests it may be a bit too soon. Captain, he's a leader, certainly is well-respected within the dressing room, but I think it, it, it feels like it would be a very tricky situation. If he's fit, I think Guardiola will have no hesitation. The doubt comes, though, is whether he is 100% fit at this stage, given the time he's had out. And Paul Martin Odegaard is fit for Arsenal, but could we see Mikel Arteta perhaps making some changes tonight? Potentially, he's got a, a few decisions to make, doesn't he? Especially in that left-back area, Zinchenko uh, did make a positive impact, but that was when Arsenal were chasing the game uh, in the first leg and uh, certainly... Uh, gave Bayern Munich something to think about as he drifted into those midfield areas and advanced areas. Uh, but, yeah, tonight, I think, would there be a surprise uh, return or start for Tommy Yasu, someone uh, coming in from a more defensive-minded perspective, or uh, will Mikel Arteta go with Zinchenko from the start? It's a, it's a really interesting one to keep an eye on because uh, that's I think that's the key area, not just for him, but also for for Bayern Munich as well, who are missing Alfonso Davies with uh, suspension uh, up against uh, Bakayo Saka and, of course, Ben White, who likes to get forward. Thomas Tuchel made reference to that this week with the fact that he thinks Arsenal like to build up most of their attacks from that right-hand side and overload and cause problems. We saw that for the first Arsenal uh, goal in London last week. So, again, there'll be key tactical battles all over the pitch and maybe even further forward with uh, Gabriel Martinelli uh, possibly coming in on that left-hand side to cause Bayern some problems as well. So uh, the good news is, as you mentioned, Martin Odegaard was involved with training. Mikel Arteta said yesterday that they would just be, uh, they would make a late decision uh, on him. But it would be a huge surprise if Martin Odegaard didn't play tonight. And Ben, of course, City knocked out Real Madrid in the semi-finals last year. And especially that game at the Etihad was such an extraordinary performance, given the opposition. But how much will that result be playing on their minds uh, ahead of this game? Yeah, well, I suppose last season we saw City exact revenge for what happened the season before, didn't we? Because this has been, uh, I saw someone refer to it, one of the Manchester City fans groups as the European El Clasico, this uh, showdown. 
Barcelona's son, Pep Guardiola, now in charge of Manchester City and Real Madrid, a team who they've come up against on seven occasions in the Champions League, seven individual matches. Four wins City have in that time, which is pretty remarkable. And they've only actually lost to Real Madrid in 90 minutes once, which is, again, remarkable in itself. They've outscored them by 17 goals to 12. So they've had the better of the head-to-heads overall. Last year, I suppose, was the culmination of that. And even the new Manchester United part owner, Sir Jim Rack, Cliff uh, has called that the standout performance he's ever seen from an English team in Europe. City absolutely blew Real Madrid away 4-0. It was a scoreline and a performance to match that really sent shockwaves around Europe and really just made the point that Manchester City were at the very top table of European football. They belonged there and ultimately they ended up with the Champions League. But as I say, that was revenge because rewind 12 months before that and it was that game, the second leg in the Bernabeu this time, where City were on course to go through to knock Real Madrid out and they suffered that heartbreaking defeat right at the end. Two goals in two minutes from Rodrigo in added time and then Karen Benzema's winner putting Real Madrid through. They had their own little miracle that night. You do feel they'll be hoping they might get another little miracle here tonight because City have such an impressive record here at the Etihad. It's going to take some performance to dislodge them. It, it really will. We talk about this as sort of an unbeaten run and 41 games at the Etihad without defeat. Um, Paul, let's come, come back to you. Um, I mean, often football throws up these, these funny scenarios um, that affect different rival teams. Will Tottenham fans actually be cheering on Arsenal tonight because the result could have an influence on whether they get a Champions League place next season? Peculiar, isn't it? It is. And do you know what, David? Um, I think on our WhatsApp, uh, the Sky Sports WhatsApp page has been running a poll today. 58% of Tottenham fans, uh, the last time we checked, wanted Bayern Munich to win this, despite it boosting Germany's chances of getting that fifth Champions League place uh, next season ahead of England. So, of course, that would impact on Tottenham, who are currently uh, in fifth place and would maybe miss out. So that's <laughs> that maybe... Should, I don't know whether many people will know about that. Maybe that, that wasn't a factor in their voting. Uh, but certainly 58% of Tottenham fans wanting that. Uh, and, of course, there's the Harry Kane element as well, a uh, former Tottenham player who has such a good goal-scoring record against Arsenal, playing in this fixture tonight for Bayern Munich, scoring in the first leg from the penalty spot. He did say yesterday uh, that fixture and that uh, sort of battle against Arsenal, if you like, is part of his DNA, although maybe not as important these days as he's playing in Germany and, uh, and it has a different kind of challenge with uh, with Bayern Munich. So uh, that is the added twist, uh, the, the quirk of the draw, not just for qualification places next season. Borussia Dortmund's win last night certainly helped uh, Germany's chances of getting that fifth place, uh, the way it works on points and everything. So an Arsenal win tonight against Bayern Munich would, would boost England again, albeit with Germany favourites uh, as things stand. So, but for the match itself, Arsenal will have to kind of overcome not just Harry Kane and Leroy Sané, who caused them all, all sorts of problems, but they will have to uh, show their character to come to uh, a venue like this, a formidable venue where Bayern Munich just have that mentality, even when things aren't going well in the league, as they've seen this season with Leverkusen winning the title, they still have this belief that they come back to Munich, having drawn in London, knowing that they have a bit of an edge. That's how they feel about this. But Mikel and Arteta and Arsenal, his squad, as we've seen from them in recent seasons, it's been progress after progress uh, each season, certainly points-wise in the Premier League. They're continuing to improve under Arteta, but this is the biggest challenge yet. Can they prove to themselves that they can overcome a giant like Bayern Munich in their own backyard and progress to the last four of Europe's Premier competition? Yeah, I think, you know, you've got two teams at home in these two ties who really do believe it's a significant factor that they can bring that cauldron atmosphere and that it will be that, that 12th man on the pitch for Manchester City and for Bayern Munich, respectively. Back to you, Ben, one final time. Um, Jude Bellingham has had an incredible first campaign at Real Madrid. He started off like a train, didn't he? How much does City need to keep him quiet if they are going to progress to the last four? Yeah, I mean, he's been fantastic. I mean, we all have watched on, haven't we? A proud Englishman to see how well he's done playing for Real Madrid, following in the footsteps of the like of, likes of David Beckham and Steve McManaman and perhaps even surpassing what they did because the way he started at such a young age has impressed even Carlo Ancelotti, who reminded us all in the press conference yesterday he is still just 20 
and yet he's got 20 goals and 10 assists so far this season in this Real Madrid career that has so far been short but extremely sweet. He's helped inspire them to go clear at the top of La Liga. They come a much more formidable prospect, I think, than at the same time last year when they arrived here in Manchester, hoping rather than expecting to beat City. Well, I think there's a bit more belief around the group. Last year, Carlo Ancelotti was upset his team didn't show the courage or the belief to play as Real Madrid and, and beat City in a difficult match. Well, I think this year he gets the sense from his team that they do have that quality. And I suppose we saw that on show in the first leg. Some fantastic goals from City. I mean, Foden's goal, Guardiola's goal were absolutely magnificent. But then uh, that Valverde strike right at the end to make it 3-3 was something truly special as well. And it really does whet the appetite. It's a tantalising prospect. The two standout teams in Europe going head-to-head -head, all to play for. And that's the beautiful thing about the way this tie is set. A bit like the way it's set in Munich as well. Tonight, it's quite simply winner takes all. It absolutely is. Appetite suitably wetted. Ben and Paul, thank you very much indeed.